Today I'm here with my friend the zebra at the North Carolina Zoo and it's gonna get eaten. Hey everyone, Rob Nelson here to talk about this cool topic of animal enrichment. Now this is one of the more fun things that I get to do because I get to see all of the different things they're doing to improve the health of the animals at the zoo. I am a behavioral ecologist. I studied the behavioral ecology of animals. Now I know that can be a little bit confusing, so let me take you back here to when I was a graduate student. This is me in 2003. I take this little camera and what I wanted to know was how does their behavior change when predators are around? So I was learning a ton about the natural behaviors of these species. Let's take something like a lion. Now they have lions at the zoo. And if you were a behavioral ecologist, what you'd do is you'd figure out what were their natural behaviors in the wild? How often did they sleep? When were they uh, stalking prey? That kind of thing. So if you're at the zoo trying to take care of your lion, you would want to encourage as much as possible their natural behaviors. So that is why at the zoo they sleep a lot. And they're trying to encourage that because in the wild, these lions sleep a lot. Now, in the wild, they also don't get their food served on dinner plates. Maybe every once in a while you'd make a paper mache zebra and you'd put food inside and, I don't know, make it a little bit interesting for the animals. All this is trying to improve the health of these animals, both physically and mentally. So what I'd like to do now, so you can get a bigger picture of this whole thing, is show you some of the animal enrichment happening in the different habitats. Reptiles here at the zoo get enrichment just like the others, and there's actually two small Komodo dragons that are getting a lot of attention. Now, in the wild, Komodo dragons are hunting for their food, so the enrichment involves making it a little more difficult to get their food. Let me step back quickly to point out the general types of enrichment. You can have social, cognitive, physical habitat, sensory, and food-based. And all of this is to improve the mental and physical lives of the animals here at the zoo. The point of enrichment programming is to give the animals an opportunity to express natural behaviors. We look towards the natural history of animals and how they would be behaving in the wild. And we want to give animals here at the zoo those same opportunities to express a lot of those natural behaviors. Now the polar bears get a lot of different enrichment, one of which is sensory. The keepers can change the smells that's entering their habitat. Most of the time, this is scents, herbs, extracts, scents from other zoo animals, and on the rare occasion, can introduce smells from, say, our camera crew. So, so actually having, say, Jonas roll around in the bed is oh, yeah. something he could do. Yep, yep. And, you mean it. It. and you mean it. Yep. <laughs> I've been told I gotta roll around. <laughs> Give them some, some Swedish, Swedish scents. <laughs> And they're doing all of this because polar bears are constantly using their noses to understand their environment. And because the zoo is doing a bunch of Easter-related activities like egg extravaganza, some of the enrichment is actually themed. So it makes it, uh, makes it harder for them. They actually have to forage for their food. Um, naturally in the wild, what they would do with um, sticks and barks, they would actually um, take that bark off of uh, the sticks and kind of make it into a sponge. Um, and so that's what they're gonna do with this uh, paper mache. They kind of do the same behavior as they would in the wild to get like water out of crevices or things like that. So kind of a different setting, but they totally use the same wild behaviors that they do in the wild. Nice. While the paper mache here is a type of container for the food, she's also trying to keep the social dominance in the group by making sure that the dominant male has his first. Definitely throw to our alpha first, um, so he's probably gonna take a bunch of the eggs from everybody else, um, but uh, we'll try to give everybody an opportunity and they also have some extra, uh, extra fruit in case someone else doesn't get anything. Okay, okay. At the same time the chimps have their Easter enrichment, so are the peregrine falcons. Um, she doesn't have hands like we do. So she can't use a knife and fork, so she uses her feet and her face. Those are her knives and her forks. So normally these the falcons are gonna be soaring really high up in the air, right. and they're looking hundreds if not a thousand feet down. That's a big thinking and stalking process. And so this, instead of it just laying there and she's like, oh, food. She has to look, she has to check things out, and she has to think about, there was food last time, is there food this time? Um, and it just kind of engages her a little bit more mentally than just laying it out on the merch. And by the way, all of this enrichment is partly made possible by volunteers. The North Carolina Zoo has a program whereby once a week, volunteers make enrichment items like the eggs that we saw from the Easter celebrations, or the zebras that are going to be introduced to the lions. That goes to the lions. <laughs> yes, yeah. that goes to the lions. Ah, so everyone simulates the prey 
items of that animal. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to see the lions eat it, it's during their Saving Species Across Africa event in September. All right, let's recap. Animal enrichment can be in many different forms, like food, cognitive, sensory, habitat, and social, just to name a few. So I hope you learned a little bit about what the zoo is doing to use the animal's natural behavior to direct the enrichment. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out the links down in the description. All right, we'll see you in a future video.